Welcome, welcome in Bienvenue, welcome, stranger, étranger, stranger, okay, it's a comedy show, uh, hey, welcome to uh, Isolation Comedy by Comedy Way Up, apparently Austin Comics uh, need a helping hand, we, uh, we have not had any shows for a very long time, we've been cooped up just like you. I recently just had my September bookings drop, so uh, we will be doing this for a while. So get comfy, um, and thank you so much for tuning in. We have a great show for you tonight, uh, all awesome comics, and very, very good. Um, it's Friday, so I always start the show by drinking, and then throughout the show I will continue drinking, and it's, it's pretty fun for me, I think. You have 20 seconds, I'm gonna go do more drinking. Each performer will have their social media and Venmo handle. If you love a comic, contribute to their Venmo directly to show your love and personalize that message because you know they're going to see it. If you give me money with a message, I'm going to read it. Tell me something silly. Tell me something slutty. I don't care. You just gave me money. Also, all these comics were service workers. <laughs> I don't know all that, but uh, a lot of them were put out because of this. COVID. So that's the last I'm going to say about COVID. This is an escape for you as much as it is for us. Uh, it's going to be a very good show. Um, also, at the very end, if you forget a comics handle or you don't anything, we'll put it up like that. Um, and if you like us, share a picture or something. Hashtag isolation comedy. All right. So let's do something fun. I always start the show by doing an, an unboxing. So I bought my first box. What is this? What's this sort of box? What's the box? Oh, it's a shot of Tito's. 
<laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. If this is a live audience, I get an applause break for that. Also, you probably realize this is not a stand-up show. Uh, if it was, I'd tell you to shut up and turn off your phone and don't talk. Talk as much as you want, drink as much as you want, and yell at us. We have a chat box down there, drop your funny to-dos, and whatever. I don't know, that was a lot. Thank you for bearing with me. We have a wonderful show. Um, I don't know if you've done any kids. Last week, I was got off off the rail on people denying COVID. Uh, I told them to all go lick a fucking handrail, and that was too much. That was much too much. That's what my dad says, and that's where I'm bunkering. I'm bunkering in uh, Colorado Springs. So uh, the air is thinner up here, so I'm already feeling that shot. So uh, let's just kick it off for your first comedian. Um, it's a very normal comedian, and he is specifically not Dutch. Uh, please put your hands together, make some noise, get some noise complaints for Christian Van Wade. Hello, how's everyone doing tonight? I said, how's everyone doing tonight? I can't hear you. Man, this place is packed. Keep it going for the last comedian. They were so funny. And if it was a female comic, then they were super funny and so pretty. No, but seriously, things are crazy these days. Things are wild. Men and women, am I right? How come when a woman has sex with too many men, she's a slut? But when a man has sex with too many sluts, and then I was all like, damn. Here comes a Dave Matthews reference. And there it goes. Dave Matthews. More like Dave Matthews McConaughey. LOL. I bet if Matthew McConaughey were here, he would be like, all right, three times. Has anyone here ever gotten a load of President Bush? Has anyone here ever gotten a load of President George W. Bush. No, but seriously, things are crazy these days. Things are wild. But seriously, you people are looking at me and you're thinking this guy hasn't had sex for months and it's true, but only because I had to send my dick to fat camp. No, but seriously, things are single these days. Things are been a while. I would now like to ask that all the women get up and leave the room. This next part is just for the fellas. All right. Great. They're gone. Finally. Now we can all relax and talk about our favorite Joe Rogan podcast episodes and compare T levels. And by T, I mean testosterone, not gay coffee. Women can't live with them and they never wanna have sex either. Women can't live with them 
and due to a recent court order, I can't go within 300 feet of a property. All right, all the women are on their way back into the room now, fellas. This time, don't forget to beta your cuck back two dicks. It's Bud Light savings time. <clears throat> Why did Bruce Willis scream at his housekeeper right in front of her young children? Hey, do you guys remember Die Hard? That movie was classic, and Die Hard was really good in it, too. Here comes another fast one for you. Where and what time did Demi Moore first give a blowjob to Ashton Kutcher? You know, if you think about it, Die Hard 3 might be the best of the diehards because it's the most watchable and Samuel Jackson was in it. Here comes another fast one for you. Has anyone noticed all of the homeless people that they have nowadays? Me neither. Whenever I see a homeless couple making out, I'm like, hey, you two, get a car. No, but seriously, has anyone here ever gotten a load of the Washington Redskins? I can't believe the Washington Redskins haven't changed their name yet. It's so disrespectful. I think instead they should be called the George Washington Redskins. So I'm a weed driver who smokes Uber. Pop quiz. How many depressing middle-aged men with sad cars does it take to drive for Uber? All of them. Oh, what? Let me guess. All you people are Uber drivers in here. I should have known when I walked in, it smelled like free cologne and Republican fuck sweat. Just kidding. Republicans don't fuck sweat, they fuck dogs. But enough about Mike Pence's wife. Karen Pence. Oh brother, so the coronavirus is still in the news. Hey. If holding racist views towards Asian people is a symptom of coronavirus, then my dead grandpa is patient zero. Here comes another fast one. Hey, have you guys heard of the shooting at the Canadian Capitol? I think if this tragedy has taught us anything, it is that Ottawa is the capital of Canada. Okay, folks, I'll just leave you with this one. What game does climate Greta Thunberg and her friends like to play during a sleepover? Truth or how dare you? Just kidding, doesn't have any friends. That's my set, thank you. That was funny, and I I promise you, he was on the right. He is a good person. He was doing a thing where he was showing. I shouldn't explain the jokes. It's not funny anyways, but I got a new box. Huh? Is it an Xbox controller? By the way, I'm a gamer. Find me on there. I will blow you. Uh, it's a beer. <laughs> Wonderful. Taste of the Rockies. I will be drinking all night long. Please join me. Also, if you're going to Venmo me, thank you so much. 
but I would prefer, I would prefer that you uh, go to my Kickstarter campaign. If I haven't already DM'd you with already a dollar, please go to there. It's on my Instagram and I show my asshole. Anyways, <laughs> up next is uh, one of my favorite comedians. Uh, he runs a wonderful uh, comedy mixtape, comedy and music videos. Please make some noise and drink the rest of this beer for Leo Garcia. Yo, everybody. Uh, how you doing? I don't actually. I don't. I don't care how you're doing at all. Uh, we're all doing the same. We're doing. We're alive, so we're doing. Uh, I got two goals for tonight. I want to tell one new joke, and then I have all these Valentine's Day balloons uh, that my wife wants me to get rid of. So I'm gonna go through my one new joke, and then I'm gonna inhale the helium in as many of these balloons as I can, and try and finish out the rest of my set with some old jokes. Okay. So let's do it. Let's just jump right in. 20, coronavirus, have you heard about this? Uh, <laughs> uh, one of the weird things about 2020 is how uh, 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 the script is getting flipped. It, flipped it. Uh, I never thought that a grocery store would be an inspiring place, right? Uh, here in Texas, we have HEB, and HEB has been an inspiring place. It's been taking care of the community. Uh, it's been treating people fair, providing stability. Uh, I was in line at HEB and a store manager was like, hey, bud, uh, we're stocked up on things. We're here to help. I hope you find what you need in there. And I was touched. Uh, and I was like, I, I think this is my new church. I think HEB is my new church. That manager is my new pastor. And every employee I walked by, I was like, father, <laughs> sister, how you doing? Uh, pastor, I don't know what the fuck they're called. Uh, HEB is my new church and uh, the gospel is written on those little yellow coupons because the one true word is savings. Right. Uh, HEB is like any other church though. Uh, depending on what part of town you're in, your church either gets nicer or looks more like a warehouse. And like if the city, if a city had a doctor they would just like look at your HEB and they'd be like, uh, your HEB isn't looking too good. Have you tried getting more money? Have you tried having more money? Or they'd be like, uh, your HEB is looking great. You're giving it plenty of money. You know, try to limit your minority intake. You know, you don't want too many of those. And maybe one day we can boop you up to a, uh, a central market. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good church it's a pretty good church they take care of the community they treat people fair and there's no molesting yet so i'm all in you know uh i'm watching that he buddy though like stay where you're at but i don't know who you're for but you ain't for me uh, unlike other churches that i've been to uh heb is different unlike any other church i've been to i actually want to go back to heb and also unlike any other church i've been to there's a giant cooler of milk at HEB, which I appreciate. I really like milk. Cool. Well, that was that. Oh, I was out today. <laughs> I was out today, and uh, we saw a car wreck, uh, and it made me think of that line from Friday. Uh, I was like, how the fuck do you get fired on your day off? Like, how do you get in a wreck in a quarantine? It's, it's the least amount of people that there are ever and you still hit someone like you should that person should probably pay the lottery because they got some weird odds in their favor okay that's all the new stuff so first off like i said i got these valentine's day balloons i didn't buy them right i don't have i have love for my wife but i don't have money for my wife. okay uh, i got these from work and they've been sitting in the house for a month and i'm gonna go ahead and rip one open see what this bad boy's about Oh yeah. All right. 
Ah, ah, shit. <laughs> ah, uh, you guys listen to metal? <laughs> Uh, I listen to metal. I love going to metal concerts in South Texas because there, uh, everybody's fat, and it makes the mosh pits. It makes the mosh pits really comfortable. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I once went to a Metallica concert at the LA Coliseum. The mosh pit was all ribs and bruises and bones, and it hurt me. Okay. I saw Hatebreed in San Antonio, and I was like, this is like being in a wave pool. <laughs> this is crazy. There's more helium, and there's more jokes. Not really. There's not really more jokes. Yo, I think that's my time. I hope you had fun. I had fun. Stick around. Garcia teaching us that helium is funny no fucking matter what. If you get some helium, inhale it. That's what we're learning. Also, I don't know if we've told you this, not a kid's show. Don't invite your kids. Also, take a break from your kids. Get some space. Tell them to go do a puzzle. What's up with puzzles these days? Also, I'll see your uh, Valentine's Day balloons with some uh, Christmas ale. Yeah, drink that right up. Actually, our next comedian is uh, quite out of touch with the seasons as well. He's one of those what you'd call a northerners, and uh, that's fine. We love him so much. I went on a road trip with this boy. I did a podcast with this boy. He's a very funny boy. He also has a special guest that I know that's popping in. Give it up. Put your hands together for Martin Hen. <laughs> Spring break, motherfuckers! That's right, I'm still in Florida. I don't care, you can't get me, Corona. They didn't, they didn't come to Florida. We're all set, we're all good. So, so happy, so happy to see you guys here. Thank you for coming out. Um, I'm wearing this shirt, so I might as well do a joke about cocaine. That's what he's saying. Uh, I read a study recently that uh, cocaine is, co or sorry, refined sugar is eight times more addictive than cocaine. Refined sugar, eight times. More addictive than cocaine. And I gotta tell you guys, I've been conducting a similar study for about the last 12 years. <laughs> I came up with dramatically different findings. Yeah, that's right. I don't know who that other guy was that was doing that first study, but it sounds like he never did cocaine before, you know, not once. I just, I can't get behind that, you know? Because if I come home and I'm full from like a big meal and then there's a piece of cake on my table. The first thing I'm going to say is, who the fuck put that cake there? I'm going to put it myself. This is terrifying, right? And then I'm going to put that cake. But if I come home in any condition, and there's like a little bit of cocaine, I'm getting excited to think about it right now. Like a little bit of cocaine on the table. I'm going to do all that cocaine. And then I'm going to give thanks to the patron St. Escobar for bestowing my apartment with such a lovely offer. And then I'm gonna bake three cakes because I need to keep my hands busy. I just I can't get behind that, you know. Like for example, if you want to get rid of your cold addiction, you gotta go somewhere. You gotta go rehab. You gotta go to a place and sign a sheet of paper that's like, hey, I'm gonna be pretty cranky for a 
a couple months, and I think I need you to just help me out a little bit. Yeah, that's not what happens for sugar. If you want to get over your sugar addiction, you just switch to diet coke. That's all you have to do. Diet coke. They don't make diet coke. Anymore. All right. I looked at it. I uh, I have. It's not out there. Okay. There's no such thing as a bag of cocaine that has a. Uh, Make my big and my audio is off. Oh, okay. Well, I guess I'll keep the show must go on. <laughs> That's what happens when you're living on the beach, baby. All right, I'm on island time. Uh, but for cocaine, like, you know, I've never seen somebody uh, blow a guy for cocaine and then blow eight more guys for refined sugar. Like that's not how, that's not how sugar works, right? Colton mentioned that, uh, Colton mentioned that we went on a road trip together, which was fun. It was a really good time. Uh, as you guys might know, Colton's, um, Colton's a gay. Colton's one of the gays. He's one of my favorite gays. I think he's a great gay. Colton's a top five bottom, as far as I'm concerned. He's a wonderful person. Uh, it was a great trip, though. You know, I got to learn a lot about gay culture. Like, I hadn't been around gay culture that much. And then I got stuck in a car with it for three weeks. And it was really educational, you know? Like, I started the trip as just this boring straight guy. <laughs> and now... I know half the lyrics to the Little Mermaid soundtrack. So it was a good setup. It was a fun trip. He, uh, he would always read his grinder discussions to me on the trip. I like calling them discussions. It was really interesting. Like we met, a, we met a guy in Iowa that was a submissive. There's a lot of submissives in Iowa, but um, I don't really have a joke for that. I think it's just important information to get out. Like you're already on your computer, you know? You got websites bookmarked, so do I, it's fine. But he's talking to this submissive in Iowa and he looks at me and he goes, hey, Martin, I'm talking to this guy named Slave. <laughs> and he told me he'll do anything I want him to do right now. What do you think I should get him to do? So I told Colton to get this guy to come to our stand-up comedy show in Iowa. And that was it, right? Could you imagine being a submissive and like being ready for that, right? You're at home, nipples just tightly clamped, balls already in the vice grip. You got a bunch of wax melted down. You're just waiting to find out where to put it. And then the only message you get back after you send out something like, I don't know, like any sick, nasty thing you want from me, master, any gross, depraved fantasy of yours, I will, I will fulfill to the utmost and give you all the pleasure at my sacrifice. And the only response back you get is, hey, could you RSVP to Martin and Colton make some ha-has in Des Moines? That's a long day. That's a long day for a submissive. Uh, gay dudes figure dating apps out, though. Like, gay dudes have dating apps down 100%. You know? As a straight, like, you've got to do something pretty basic, right? You've got to swipe between, like, you know, uh, a couple different apps that you like and pick the girls you like and you don't like. With gay dating apps, they work backwards, where they made an app for every type of dude you might want to be with, and then you just pick that app and there's all the dudes, right? So I'll give you a couple examples. One of them's like uh, Scruff, right? Scruff is if you want a dude with a beard, but you want him to be a little bit older, you know? One of them's Growler. Growler's if you want a dude with a beard, but you're like, nah, I don't really care how old he is, you know? Uh, one of them's Bear Hunt. Now I know what you're thinking, Bear Hunt, guy with a giant beard, right? Not the case. Uh, Bear Hunt is just where you find a guy that's willing, bear hunts where you just find a guy that's willing to hook up with you in the parking lot of a Cabela's sporting goods. That's all bear hunt is. So that's gonna be my time. Uh, Colton said we were drinking, so I was gonna shotgun a white claw for spring break before I got out of here. Yeah, here it is. Oh. And there you go. Take care, guys.
Martin Hen. Wow, that was fun. Next up is a veteran turned Rob Zombie fan. Give it up <laughs> for Shannon McGridge. <laughs> Hey everyone, what's going on, man? Welcome to my living room. So, uh, hope everyone's keeping their sanity here. You know, we got three kids that we're stuck with every day, and they're nine, eight, and six. Uh, the other day, I got woken up by my nine year old coming up to me about, about eight in the morning, just poking me in the ribs. Dad, 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 what? He said, Are you going to get up and make breakfast? Sure, what do you want your last meal with you, little fucker? Man, I was so. We're trying to keep it staying around here, but it's not working, man. But it's all pretty crazy right now. And, uh, and I really, I think it really hit home whenever Tom Hanks was diagnosed with the coronavirus. You know, that got everybody's attention. Because it's Tom Hanks. Now, I think we can all agree, though, if it had been Tom Cruise, everyone would have been like, ah, well, he had a good run. You know, <laughs> good enough, man. Uh, saw, too, that uh, there's a uh, Waffle House. That the cook, one of the cooks was uh, diagnosed with, and they're really worried about you know, people coming down when they can serve food. And it got me to thinking, man, if uh, if you get a Waffle House and all you walk away with is coronavirus, then you consider that one a win. You know, you're doing pretty good there, man. So, yeah, this is weird not having people, not hearing people, man. But uh, like uh, Colton was saying, I was a Rob Zombie fan way before I grew my hair out. Before. <laughs> but ever since I grew my hair out and grew my beard out, I get a different reaction from people that I'm used to. You know, as I got my daughter, a nine-year-old, she asked me the other day, she's like, Dad, what year were you born? And I said, why don't you try to guess? And she looked up at me and she said, 1905. <laughs> really? All right, well, this is why your sister is my favorite, you know. <laughs> but it also happened, uh, I was walking by a church recently. And uh, I did not burst into flames, apparently. But I was walking by a church, and I was coming up to the crosswalk. And when I got to the crosswalk, this little Toyota pulled up next to me. And so I looked over to make sure they were going to stop. And the, uh, there was a little old white lady driving the Toyota. And when we made eye contact, she looked right at me, and she reached up and locked the doors of her car right in front of me, man. Like, I heard the click. I saw it happen. And the thing is, it's not like I was going to carjack her. But you know, having said that, if anybody's in the market for a Toyota, I got one I need to get rid of real quick. Uh, got it off a little old lady who just drove to church. <laughs> but, but it happens a lot, man. I, uh, I brought it up because uh, I got a new gun recently, too. And with my CHL, when you look at it, it's a picture of when I got out of the Navy. So I have a military haircut. And uh, when I handed it to the guy to look at, he took one look at the picture, and then he looks at me, and he kind of gives me a weird look, you know, and runs it, and everything's good to go. But after it was done, I brought it up to my wife and her friend, and her friend made a good point. She said, uh, you got to take in consideration his side of the story on this, because whenever you had that picture taken, you had the military haircut, uh, you're clean shaven, and now you look like Forrest Gump after he's been running for about two months. So <laughs> I think it's a valid point, man. But the thing with kids, though, like I said, being a gun owner, I wanted, I didn't want to take my kids shooting. Kids, so like I said, being I would like to take my and right now, the big thing in our house is Nerf guns. Uh, there's Nerf guns everywhere. Right the, big thing and, uh, the good thing about the Nerf guns is I can teach them the basics, you know, with the Nerf gun. You know, just the little things, you know, like uh, keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot. You know, like, uh, the difference between a magazine and a clip, or don't shoot your sister in the fucking face when you're mad at her. You know, just the little things that are really important when it comes to that kind of stuff. But they know not to touch my guns. They know where they're at and they're not allowed it. And then uh, I keep them in the closet. And one day they're having a Nerf gun war and my oldest daughter comes up to me and she's all like, Dad, I need a gun. I was like, all right, come in. I got one in the closet. And we get out halfway there and she stops and she just looks up at me and she's like, Dad, I need a fake gun. <laughs> what? You know, like that. Like you really thought I was gonna give you a loaded gun to go play with your brother and sister? Because I mean, 
I can never see it, man. She's still walking in there, kicking the door and be like, remember when you stole my Elsa doll? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're going to give me the Elsa and you're going to give me Anna with interest. Yeah. Say what one more time. <laughs> and uh, but it gets even better with the boy because the boy, he's six now and he's uh, all about the guns, man. But when he gets in trouble, I have to be the bad guy and I got to take the guns away from him. And when he does, when I have taken him away from him, you know, he just turns into this little six-year-old Second Amendment nut, you know, storming up the stairs. He's like, fucking liberals always take my goddamn guns. You know, it's the, it the cutest little gun nut you'll ever see, man. But I told my wife, it's just a matter of time, you know, before he starts saying shit like, well, Dad, uh, you can have my Nerf gun when you pry it from my cold, dead hands. You know, or, yeah, Dad, if you take the Nerf guns away from the good kids, only the bad kids are going to have Nerf guns. Yeah, well, dude's gonna be running around in a red hat that says "Make Recess Great Again." You know, fucking building Lego walls around the property line to keep the bad Pokemon out. So, all right, y'all, thanks for tuning in, man. I appreciate it. That's my time. Imagine if your dad did that set with you in the room and you were like, how does my dad feel about that? Now you know. That's why stand-up's important. Also, time for a boxing opportunity. What's in this box? Is it a beer? It looks like a beer. It's a coupon for a beer. <laughs> Luckily, I have this here. Coming up next, is a man who is definitively the third best comedian in Austin, Texas. And people voted on it. I don't know which people, but they voted and they made it so. Put your hands together and drink this beer with me. Give it up for Michael Priest. Hey guys, um, my name is Michael. Um, so I'm gonna give you a little tour of the place. Um, let's see, over here, we've got, uh, where is it? My bed. And then over here, you've got the kitchen. And over here, you've got a globe, okay? But uh, over here, you see the Christmas lights, just cause we're uh, on house arrest, doesn't mean we can't have fun, you know? Um, Get up for Colton Dowling, very funny guy. Um, he's a super funny guy. You know he's not really gay? Uh, nice guy, but I, I don't know. I think that's wrong, but anyway. Um, yeah. Um, hey, give it up for- Dowling, very funny guy. Give it up for- um, Funny guy. You know he's not really gay? My apartment. Um, Nice guy. Uh, who's who's about to perform the Joker? Yeah. Um, you see the Joker? My apartment. Uh, uh, do y'all know who? Uh, Gabriel Iglesias is? You do? That's fine. I'll just do my own stuff. From this point on, all me. Uh, they say suicide is for cowards. Have you heard that? Yeah. Uh, but have you ever even tried to punch yourself? So... I don't know. Uh, this this whole situation is fucked up, you know. Um, lately, I've just been uh, mouthing the words to the pledge. Pledge of Allegiance. If you don't, you're not aware. Oh, I will say this. Uh, did you know that uh, if you ask a cop, he has to tell you his sign? 
So that's pretty cool. Uh, okay, okay, here's the thing. Free speech. How about we get paid a little every time? A couple bucks, something like that. Uh, a sex offender moved in next door because uh, we're economically par. Society values us the same. I got to tell you, I'm against the sex offender registry. Uh, I don't think we should be getting these people gifts. And we know what you want. We get it. Jesus Christ. I uh, Sometimes I can hear my neighbors having sex. I haven't been getting all asleep. I can sometimes hear my neighbors having sex. Uh, but you got to be real quiet. Shh. They need this. They've been fighting. His fault. He doesn't listen. He never listens. I listen. I'm always listening. Uh, so I, I guess you guys have uh, been watching this pornography stuff. You guys, yeah, I'm sure. Um, a lot of people, um, they think pornography is wrong. It's deviant. And it's like not compared to other ways to watch people have sex. Can't go back to that. It's cold outside. Do you guys ever, um, we watching pornography and you just feel like a Saudi prince just watching people fuck? You're like, yes. Throw the grandmother in. <laughs> Tell that one there's a job. So that's fun. God, um, I'm trying to get back with one of my exes. I don't care which. No good. Just whoever responds to the group text, pretty much. Uh, a lot of my guy, guy friends complain about Tinder. But it's like, if you've had sex even one time, that's a pretty good app. Let's see the last time the, the weather app sucked your dick. Where are my men's at? Where, where are my men's at? Yeah, condoms, right? Yeah. Why are they so long? It's like we're being pranked every time. Yeah, those guys at the condom factory just must have the biggest dicks. So like, yeah, that's about right. <laughs> Goes up to here and a lady. And kill her. Kill her with that. <sighs> I don't know. Sexuality is crazy, don't you think? Sexuality is definitely definitely crazy. Uh, my brother is gay. Uh, he hasn't believed me, but uh, he is he's quite gay. Good guy. Uh, sex can have serious consequences. I don't know if you guys knew that. Uh, sex can definitely have serious consequences. Uh, when we were 18, my girlfriend came to me. She was pregnant. And I said, uh, your mom is going to kill you. And she said, no, she's not like that. And I told her I was talking to the baby. But uh, abortion is wrong. Disgust. I remember uh, when we went in there uh, in Texas, you have to look at the sonogram. I'll never forget it. The doctor said, here you go. And it's like, oh my God, that's him. Get him. So there's that. I don't know. I, I feel like this is uh, bringing out the best in people, this whole situation. I was at the store and an older couple ahead of me was checking out. The cashier asked, did you find everything you were looking for? They said, well, we couldn't find any bread. This guy in the next line handed over a loaf and said, you're welcome to anything in my cart. It was so sweet. I even saw him helping the couple set up PayPal and enter his email address for them. It's really quite something. <sighs> Guys, um, I'm afraid we're done with this. Are you going to send me money? Can I be honest? I really like this not having audience thing. Like, you do comedy, man. People come up to, up to you after a show. They're like, hey, man, I was the guy who screamed at where I was from. It's like, oh, you Wisconsin piece of shit. Get the fuck away from me. But no, they are They are good. Uh, they're good guys. And they are, they're always heckling. They go, oh, I was trying to make the show better. But it's like, this is better. I like it. I like it a lot. Well, I guess that's it. See you guys later.
what michael priest so fucking funny he's great and uh we have a wonderful show we have a couple more comedians and as michael said if you love them the van mo them uh we definitely need it for everybody who else is joining the show welcome thank you so much coming up next is a lady who ran a uh show at a sex shop i think <laughs> she'll have to tell about it yourself Please put your hands together and drink this beer with me. Give it up for Holly Cuomo. Hey, give it up for Colton, America's unemployed Ken doll. Um, sorry, my child wouldn't go to sleep. So he's in this video. He's adopted. What? Oh my God, he's a dog. Um, but no, he will whine the whole time if I don't hold him. He's an asshole. Yeah. He didn't give a shit about anybody. You want treats? Nope, he's dead. Anyway, um, this, this guy doesn't matter. Don't look at him. <sighs> I am Asian American. Uh, I'm a real one. Konnichiwa. But yeah, I'm a real Asian. And uh, part of being Asian is having a lot of jobs. I've had a lot of different jobs. This guy at work, Every time we talk, so I was like, oh, I've had a job like that. I've been in construction, I hauled debris. Someone said I look like a librarian. I was not a librarian, but it did work for an ethnic romance novel publishing company. And all I did was read books in an old warehouse, and listen to My Chemical Romance, Panic at the Disco. I got paid $7.25 for it. Another job that I've had is, I was a bouncer at a bounce house. I was a bouncer at a bounce house. How fucking stupid is that? It's a, one of the dumbest jobs I've ever had. So I used to be on a roller derby. Get the fuck down, dude. Nobody likes you. I used to be on a roller derby team. And we had a party, we had a fundraising party. And we took a big bouncy house, put it inside of a club. We charged people entrance into there. I just sat out outside of it from a whistle. I just was like, hey, two people limit. Have fun. And then um, so these two people came. They were drunk. They were rowdy. And um, it was like a really ugly dude, like an ugly dude, like a pretty younger woman and I was like this guy has to have money or a tiger um yeah so they went in the bounce house they bounced for a little bit and all of a sudden her head fell in his lap and I knew what was happening it was gross so I just started blowing my whistle <gasps> so excited as dick I freaked the fuck out and she was like, no, I wasn't. And I was like, yes, you were. Bitch. I got him kicked out of the club. Some badass. <sighs> Shout out to all my derby girls. Anyway, what else do I talk about? There's a toilet next to me. This is my shower. Um, I just got out of the shower. I felt like all my Tiger King vibes. <sighs> what else am I talk about? Oh, I had that dog that you just saw. Um, he's a vegan. Yep. He came up to me and was like, Mom, I'm going to be a vegan. And I was like, you're already a Chihuahua. What else? You can't be anything else. <sighs> and he's like, well, I'm going to change my name to Thaddeus and drink IPAs. And I was like, what the fuck is wrong with you? I was like, 
why are why are you talking oh that's right you're vegan now you won't shut up about it i hate that dog i'm just kidding he's really cute but he sucks i want to give him back to my parents you hear me talking about him he's coming back anyway let's talk about being asian again so there's there's two women on this show both of us are named holly one's with an i one's with a y Feel free to not get us confused unless you're gonna Venmo me. And then I'm fine with it. But I will I will kick her some. No, I won't. But yeah, I think I'm the only Asian on the show. Yeah, Scott doesn't count his wife's Asian. He's not. Um Yeah. I I'm half Filipino. Cool. Yeah, nobody cares. I'm also half white could care even less. And um, I get really upset when I feel like the Asian American community doesn't accept me. Look, look at me, I, I, have, I have so many Korean face masks. I love BTS, I love Hello Kitty. <sighs> anyway, so I feel like uh, Asian Americans don't accept me because I look so fucking white and uh, I don't eat rice. Oh. Yeah, some guy tried to give me shit for playing the ukulele in public. He's like, oh, another white girl in Austin played ukulele. Cultural appropriation. I was like, bitch. I am Moana Motunui. We will board my boat. We will sail across the sea. I'll fuck you up. I don't know. Anyway, that's all I'm going to talk about. I want to go to bed. I got painkillers to take. I can't drink alcohol with it. I'm cranky. I love you guys. Peace out. Venmo everybody. <sighs>so much for having me on tonight's show i why I, I am like a little bit curious as to why we're doing this on the internet instead of at a bar like did something happen or i don't know either way uh since we are doing this over the internet i did want to make sure to let everybody know that um if for whatever reason i like freeze or disappear it's not because i'm having internet troubles it's actually because i made a snap self-care decision to immediately disconnect and abandon ship so i uh i did want to give that disclaimer i don't know this is this has been a weird experience like self quarantining um mostly just because uh now I have so much time to get my dad shit, which has been a complete gift. Uh, because like growing up, I used to be very terrible about like attending jobs. Like I would go sometimes. And I don't know, like I, I played a lot of video games instead. And like something that my dad always told me growing up, he'd be like, you can't, you can't just stay inside and play video games all day. Like you have to actually get up and go to work. And now in the current environment, um doing that is actually responsible <laughs> which is great i've like completely flipped it on him he has no idea what's happening and if he has any objections to it and goes outside to try to deal with it he might die so like fucking checkmate dad i win 
you know? I don't know, that's a, that's a new one, I guess. Uh, <laughs> sad face, okay, great, great. That's exactly what you wanna hear, just somebody replying sad face to something uh, that you said that is supposed to bring joy. So, <clears throat> I don't know. I, uh, I like, I've had a lot of time uh, at my house to like come up with like new business ideas because that's one of my favorite things to do. And what I'm working on right now, I'm actually trying to get a business off the ground. And then it's like, uh, like you know, in drag performance, uh, <laughs> whenever somebody becomes a drag queen, if they're like taught that by somebody they're referred to as their drag mother, I'm actually trying to make a website where we can track drag lineage, like Ancestry.com, but I'm calling it uh, faggottree.com. That's it, that's as far as I've gotten. I just really love the word faggotry. <laughs> oh God, yeah. I, uh, speaking of, my partner is a drag queen, which is delightful. He's sitting right over there, can hear everything I'm saying, so don't worry. Uh, one time we were in, or we were in a fancy restaurant, it was my roommate's birthday, and to surprise my roommate, he showed up to dinner in full drag. And while we were there, he leans over to me and taps me on the shoulder and whispers, I have to go to the bathroom. That's my roommate. And after he said that to go, okay, you okay, have to, no, I'm not, I'm not muted right now, man. Like I'm actually doing the thing. <laughs> anyway. We were at dinner, he was in full drag. He leans over to me and he goes, I have to go to the bathroom. And I was like, that's great. Uh, thank you for letting me know. And he goes, which bathroom do you think that I should use? And I was like, oh, okay. I was like, look, as a fellow queer person who's read a lot of articles on this exact subject matter, I can say with confidence that I have no fucking idea. <laughs> I have no fucking idea because it's two different dangerous situations, right? Like if you're in drag, you walk into a men's restroom, uh, they're going to be like, oh, queer and freak out. You might beat you up. But if you walk into a women's restroom, they're going to be like, oh my God, I love drag queens. And they're going to put you in your purse and I'm never going to see you again. <laughs> so it's like, which is the bigger risk? I don't know. I, it's becoming like riskier now, especially with like all gender restrooms, which like in theory I support, but I do have to say like, I think personally I'm against all gender restrooms. Um, not because I have any problem using the bathroom with a woman, um, mostly because I have a problem with using the bathroom with a very drunk woman. <laughs> Like, cause that's a specific thing to have to deal with. Just like some girl being like, Michelle, shut the door. There are four of us in this stall. Shh. I, cause again, gay people, their favorite thing. Snatch us up, put us in their purse. You'll never see me again. Heads or tails. Oh boy. I, you, clearly I'm fine. <laughs> we're we're doing great. I don't know. Real right now, like I, my anxiety just feels like a boxing MC in the back of my head. It's just screaming shit like "Let's get ready to crumble," and I oblige. Oh, I don't know. <sighs> everything is just everything is just crazy right now. Like <sighs> everything's weird. Like I mean, at least I'm not driving around anymore. Like driving now is particularly stressful because I don't know how many of the, the viewers are from Texas, but if you have ever driven a car in Texas, it's fucking terrifying, right? Uh, because one thing that we like to do here in Texas is uh, we like to use our giant road signs uh, to keep a daily count of how many people have died on our roads that year. Which it's like, why are we playing this game? I don't understand the Well, I mean, like, I do understand the point. Like, but I mean, it's just a weird experience. Like, you're just driving down the road and you're like, oh, happiness. That's what that feels like. And then you pass by that sign that's like 3,129 people have died on Texas roads this year. And then you're like, fuck, I'm on a Texas road right now. And then you crash your car taking your antidepressant that you need to handle that news while that sign just ticks up one and you burn alive in your car. I... Is, is that a relatable experience? How many other people uh, have burned alive in the carpet? I don't know. Before I get out of here, I'll leave you guys with a quick impression because uh, my time is coming to an end. And by that, I do mean that I'm going to hire a task rabbit to drown me in the tub after this set. Um, but I'll leave you with this. Uh, <laughs> it's a quick impression that I like to call the offended astronaut. Uh, and that one goes, uh, <laughs> Houston, do we have a problem? And then 
we all get to sit here together in silence because what? Being around people is terrifying and we're all doing our best. I'm just being myself. Anyway, guys, enjoy the rest of the show. By the way, oh, I meant to mention, um, if you send anything to me on Venmo, I will be using it to donate uh, coffee carafts to healthcare workers here in Austin. So take care. Enjoy the rest of the show. Bye. Hey, Krebs! Wow, wow, wow! I told you, he was funny. We have another very funny comedian. Maybe you know him as a man who owns a little bit of the fallout cedar. Or maybe you know him as the man who hosts Comedy Batch, which you cannot go to, but it's fun. And they have like kolachkis, which is heritagely very fun for me. Anyways, make some a lot of noise and drink a lot of beers. I'll get another one. Don't you worry. Give it up for Robert Segovia. Robert Segovia is so much fun. Kolachkis, that is the most amazing way to say kolachis ever. Uh, thank you, Colton. You're doing a great job. I like Colton have a beer. Uh, my thing has uh, Kenny Rogers on it, a uh, rip to a real one. Uh, RIP. I don't know why I said rip. It's not as good. Um, just some things have been happening to me uh, since this whole thing has been happening. Uh, I. Uh, uh, I had a birthday, it was my birthday recently, um, and somebody really sweetly uh, delivered to my door, I didn't read the Twitch guidelines, so I'm going to cover up the logo of the product, but you probably know, they delivered this to my door, which is this really cool uh, Saturn uh, plane, it's not a plane, uh, but but uh, yeah, so that was sweet, so shout out, uh, I'm just going to do shout outs for this six minutes, shout out to... Uh, Joe and Stephanie, you guys rule. Um, other things that have happened to me that have been pretty uh, dope. Uh, I learned that like, I'm a better cook than a lot of you guys. Um, I've only been to the grocery store once to, since this all went down, but God, guys, you gotta get better. <laughs> you guys are still acting like you're freshmen in like a college dorm. Like there was no ramen at the store, but if you want like, I don't know, fresh ve vegetables, plenty, plenty of fresh vegetables. If you're trying to cook, it's, it's there. So uh, the other fun thing that's happened with the, uh, with the old uh, Caroni is, uh, Caroni, Tony, Tony is the, the like, um, somebody got in an argument with, with me on the internet of just like, you know, uh, the wall is gonna help with the coronavirus People don't know how viruses work. Wall, they can go through walls. That's one thing. That's, I failed biology, but I know they can go through walls. That's what I know. Okay, we're gonna get to some real jokes here in a second, start my set, uh, but, um, but first a message from our sponsor. No, I don't have a sponsor. Back to the future. Um, so I work with kids. Um, I work with uh, uh, five-year-olds. We teach them um, art. Uh, and kids are great, you know, they, um, they are just like, uh, I treat them just like um, an adult that's had a couple of beers, you know, like, they're not drunk, they're just a little tipsy, you know, I, I, uh, I uh, like, uh, give them, you know, that I'm like, you know, don't hit the person you like, you know, don't put that in your mouth. That's not what a playground's for. You know, they're they're not drunk, they just shouldn't drive. That's all I'm saying. And so we do little things to get them like motivated. One of the things we do is we uh, let them introduce themselves with their pronouns. Um, and they're five years old, so they don't know what pronouns are. When you're like, please say your name and your pronouns are like, what's a pronoun? Like they have no clue what's a pronoun. 
and you don't want to gender identify them. So you just have to wait for a very smart kid to just yell, uh, you're a she and a her, you know, just to somebody. Uh, so they were doing that. They were doing that in a circle. And, um, you know, one kid was like, hi, I'm Tara. I identify as a she and a her. And my favorite movie is Frozen. And then another kid was like, hi, my name is Chris. I identify as a he and a him. And my favorite movie is Frozen. And there was like another kid and they were like, hi, I'm Clara. I identify as a she and a her. And my favorite movie is Frozen 2. Um, so we were just going around the circle. Just we got to the end of the circle and then uh, we were just like, at the end of the circle, we were just like, uh, we came with this kid, Taylor, and Taylor just looks at the rest of the group with like a smirk on his face, and he just goes, hi, I'm Taylor, and I identify as a poop and a butt. And then like, all the kids are laughing. I can't laugh, because I'm the adult. But yeah, that was fun. Um, what else? Yeah, I, uh, I didn't... Uh, start smoking marijuana till I was in my 30s. Uh, you can tell because I'm calling it marijuana right now. Uh, that's one clue. And I'm really uptight about it. So I was like at a party and, um, and like somebody handed me a bong and I was like, nice water bong. And they were like, Robert, they're all water bongs. You don't have to call it a water bong. That's like calling a Republican a racist. You don't have to say it out loud. Uh, yeah, so my parents were pretty crazy and that's why I'm a little bit uptight about drugs. Uh, they used to do uh, crazy things like they used to uh, chase hurricanes. Um, guys, you don't have to chase a hurricane. It just comes right to you. Um, you do, however, you can chase a hurricane uh, if, I don't know, you're both high on peyote and one of you is drinking straight whiskey while the other is rolled down the window and is just going, wind, wind, wind. While your eight-year-old is freaking out in the back. I'm the eight-year-old. Um, I'm gonna leave you guys with this. Uh, I sexually identify as ashamed. Anybody else? Anybody else do that? All right, I'm Robert. Have a good night. Please donate. Bye, see you later. Robert Sergovia, this man hates Republicans. If you're a Republican, do not go to Robert's house. He will welcome you with only love, I'm sure, because he's a kind boy. I love this man. Oh my goodness, I have a couple other funny comedians for you if you're welcome, and I am. I've been listening to the new Duo Lipa album. Anybody else makes some noise for Duo Lipa? Oh my God. She has a song called Boys Will Be Boys, and boy, do I feel guilt. I will tell ya, I grew up the wrong way, and that's my dad's fault, and I won't take any responsibility. Anyways, we have a new, very kind, very emotionally sensitive, very, he has children. I lie about having children. This man actually has children. He hosts an open mic, and he, he does it with love. I hate open mics. This man loves open mics. It's very good, sad. I'm sorry, I've been listening to a lot of Trump. Give it up. Put your hands together in your house. I know it's weird. It's weird. Put your hands together for Scott Sticker, the man of the hour. Yes, I'm going to go get another beer. First off, I just want to say that I do not love open mics. That's a ridiculous thing to say about anyone. No one loves open mics. I'm just a nice person, it turns out. Oh, boy, I'm happy to be here. That's not true. I'm not happy to be here at all. I'm stuck, quarantined at home with my children, which you all should be too, at home, not 
with my children, preferably, please. Uh, I have two, two kids, uh, our seven-year-old, the oldest one. Uh, this, is, this pandemic is perfect for him because he's actively getting creepy. It was happening before this pandemic. He started using the phrase, by nightfall? Nope. It's not a thing a normal kid says. That is definitely super villain speak is what by nightfall is for sure he's uh he's getting obsessed with death which people tell me is normal it doesn't feel normal at all uh walked in his room the other day he said daddy how am i gonna die I, I, dude you're playing with legos what i don't don't know i just said the first thing that came into my mind which was I don't know, buddy. There's so many ways we all can die. <laughs> oh, he's creepy. Uh, I'm losing my mind, so I'm gonna sing you a song that he sung me the other day. Uh, Strawberry fields forever, but not actually forever, because everything dies, right, Dad? <laughs> Just actively driving me towards the grave, this kid. Uh, we have a two-year-old also, and he is a strawberry-infused pony eating strawberry waffles in a field of lilacs. That is the energy that this child brings into our house. It's almost April. We're in quarantine during a pandemic, and he wakes up every morning and sings Frosty the Snowman to us. I'm losing my mind with these children. My seven-year-old just runs in the room. He's like, there's no such thing as singing snowmen, and there's no such thing as souls. Like, okay, dude, chill out. My two-year-old the other day was like, I love Santa still, but I have room in my heart for you and mommy. My seven-year-old just ran in. He was like, there's, I only use my heart to pump blood to my brain to make rational decisions. That is, yeah. he also loves Santa though. I don't know, it's too much. He's, he's smart though, the seven-year-old, he's incredibly smart. He, uh, he asks questions all the time. The first thing he said to me this morning was, Daddy, how do my eyeballs stay inside of my face? I don't know, dude, gravity, it's not gravity. It's too early, I'm, I'm losing my mind. He asked me the other day, Daddy, do snails have brains? And I was like, yeah, they're animals. They probably have brains. He said, actually, Miss Becky told me they had ganglion neurons. I was like, why are you testing me? What is this dude? This kid is on all the time. I haven't slept since he was born, just up all night Googling the dumb shit he asks me. My Google history is insane. It's like, which animals have eyebrows are birds and iguanas friends why hasn't mommy left you yet just these wild questions this child comes up with i'm glad she's still with me i would definitely i don't know what i would do if i didn't have another adult here in the house uh she's cool we met uh, when we were working at an animal sanctuary together i'm a disney princess if there was any question about that now she was building habitats for these animals. Uh, she's like the tiny five foot three Gaston to my bell is what she is. First time I met her, she was holding a chainsaw, cutting branches off of a tree for uh, monkeys to climb on. And I was like, oh, is that safe? That chainsaw is bigger than you. She turned it off. She was like, Scott, Wolverine was also five foot three. She turned back the chainsaw and chopped down the tree. I was like, oh God, please bury me. I need your protection. She does. Protects me, it's very sweet, physically and emotionally. I don't know what that means. Um, I work for, uh, well, I don't do any work right now. I'm, I'm doing my best. I, I worked for an environmental organization, obviously, clearly that's what I do. Uh, we did good work here in Texas though. We, uh, we clean the marshes so that ducks can go breed in those marshes, so that rednecks can go murder those ducks. A little bit of a process for sure. Uh, I used to work with an environmental lawyer who said the word especially, which just proves that any of us can be anything. <sighs> uh, that's all the jokes that I'm going to tell. This was a lot of fun. I don't know if that's true. I, I had a good time. I feel crazy. Uh, bye forever. Thanks.
Strawberry fields, but not forever, because we all die, right, Dad? That's the best song I've ever heard. Uh, wonderful, I'll be singing that all week. Thank you so much, Scott Sticker. The next man you're not ready for. I don't know where you are. I'm in your house right now. I'm, I'm wherever you are, and you're like, I'm safe, I'm here. This man, he is coming for you, okay? He is the host of Turnt. Comedy? I don't know what that is. It's a show. I've been there. It's been. It's amazing. You should go to it when you can and when it's safe. He's also on a podcast. It's safe now. Go check it out. It's starring Ryan Gosling, literally starring Ryan Gosling. Type that in and give it up. Put your hands together for this foxy fox. Give it up for Derek Kupswa. <laughs> Did someone call the Kopsawa? Hey, it's me, Derek Kopsawa. Uh, let's see. Uh, I've been I've been having an interesting month. Uh, how about you guys? That guy gets it. Uh, it's fun uh, having a job that I can still do. I can make a living with it. Uh, <laughs> I feel like these times are pretty terrible compared to what it's been like. Uh, like, don't don't we like yearn for that time we were upset about Kobe dying? Like that, I don't mean to like joke about it, but I hated that it happened. It was like so unfair. Like what a harsh penalty for traveling. Let's see, I'll let you guys recuperate from that. Uh, I did have a pretty bad day. Uh, someone caught me eating my boogers. What, they're like nature's cabbage. They're green, literally and figuratively. Uh, I feel like I recovered though. Because I yelled at that dude, just making sure I'm not wasting any coke. That way he'd be like, ah, cool and frugal. My kind of guy. Uh, let's see. Let me uh, tell you more about myself. Uh, I, I support transgender rights. Uh, hold the applause. I mean, I can't hear it either way. Uh, but I will read the Twitch, so keep that in mind, you fucking weirdos <laughs> that I don't know having comments and shit. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, let's see. So uh, I don't care what you identify as. I don't care what bathroom you use. It has no effect on me. But I will say I do hate when, like, a guy brings his child into the bathroom that's not the same gender as him, especially when I'm in there. Like, it, it's it's whatever. Like, I don't have any, like, confidence issues about it. Like, I got this body on lock, you know? I just feel like if a little girl is in the men's bathroom and sees me using it, it's going to ruin her life. Like, 10 years down the road, she's still going to be in therapy and be like, I just can't move on since the day I saw that fat guy shitting in a urinal. Uh, let's see. I'm also into movies. How do we feel about movies? <laughs> we have to watch them. We can't go to work. Uh, movies are pretty cool. Uh, I want to be like my main man, Steven Seagal, one day. I don't know about you guys, but fucking live for Steven Seagal. You guys ever notice that all of his movies begin with a preposition? We have Above the Law, On Deadly Ground, Under Siege 2. I'm still waiting for Out of Work, Off to Rehab, In Denial. Bonus laser disc is called Beside the Point. <laughs> yeah, I want to be in movies one day. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, I'm also a really big fan of video games, obviously. I look like a PS3 game character now, I'm pretty sure. 
uh it's video games are fun i think that they're inspiring people always try to act like that they're the reasons that there's terrible things in this world like violence it's like hello violence has been out longer than video games by at least five years what do we blame 50 years ago scrabble billy was a good kid till he got in trouble word scrolling murder then that all got fucking level dude that's how they uh notification there we go <laughs> uh yeah it's it's so stupid like it's are they thinking that like oh my god uh timmy was a good kid till he got a triple word score on murder and them all got fucking leveled i feel like i said that part already i'm on four different drugs but let's enjoy this quarantine <laughs> so um let's see so i think video games are inspiring multiple reasons all personal reasons uh, Mortal Kombat taught me the word flawless before I learned it in first grade. Dance Dance Revolution taught me how to dance. And Grand Theft Auto, that taught me how to talk to women, dude. <laughs> and I still use these skills in my everyday life. Sometimes I'm all up at the club, and I'll be like, so bitch, I'll hit that pussy be flawless. That my neighbor is going to be so pissed I'm sexy <laughs> and joking around and shit. So uh, let's see. Uh, I am a Domino's delivery driver because I fit the profile. Sexy. Sexy's the profile. You got eyes. Use them. Internet. All 18 people. Uh, it's, it's enjoyable being a pizza delivery driver. Like, I feel like it's inspiring. I feel like I'm on the same level as a teacher. Hear me out. Uh, I feel like uh, this illustrates this perfectly. Uh, the other day. I got to teach a grown man about perspective. I rang the doorbell. He opened the door and said, is that the large? And I'm like, why, yes, sir. This is the large. And he's like, that's, uh, that's pretty fucking wild, dude, because that doesn't look like a large to me. And uh, I was like, oh, I can explain. It's because I am also a large. And he's like, dude, fucking hell yeah. They tip me 25 cents. I know. It's exactly like being a teacher, though. You teach a big lesson, make a tiny amount of money. Uh, let's see. So um, earlier today, someone was uh, yelling at me. People always yell at me when I'm wearing, like, work clothes. It's really weird. Uh, <laughs> they always call me Domino's, too. Like, this dude was like, <laughs> hey, Domino's. What? <laughs> what specials y'all got this week? And I was like, well, we're open. Is that special enough? Um, let's see. And also, uh, I feel like I have the one job as a man where I constantly feel like I'm being catcalled by other men. It's like I'll be walking through a complex with six pizzas every time I hear, hey, Domino's, let me get in that box. I'm like, come on, man, I'm working. Yeah, dude. You smile more. You're on the clock. It's uh, it's very shitty having to deal with that. But uh, I'll tell you guys this last part. Uh, it's good having a mechanic friend because I am useless as a man. Like I'm not so much a man as much as I'm a tomboy. Uh, but uh, <laughs> every it's good having that friend because every time I go to a real mechanic, they always find more things wrong than I initially thought I had. Like every time they're like. Yeah, not only do you need new brakes, you need a new timing belt, you're also a bitch. I'm like, take all of my money. Uh, do the opposite of that and pay me on Venmo, please. It has been wonderful doing this show. And uh, I'd like to thank everyone that's done it so far. Give it up for the next couple of comics and your host, Colton. That's his name. <laughs> Give it up for Guy Fox, everybody. That was hilarious. Also, it's come that time of the night where we've reached our last and personally my favorite comedian. Every comedian's been good. We've been watching, but this one is actually my favorite. And I'm sorry, everybody should know. Know what? Fuck you. You should know. This is my favorite comedian. But also, we should give thanks to our uh, wonderful contributors, Valerie Lopez, 
She put this, she coordinated everybody. I did nothing. Give it up for Valerie Lopez. If you ever see her, give her some fucking dollars because she has a child and I only lie about having a child. Give it up for Richard Goodman. This man is a technology whiz. I barely understand Twitch. I think we all agree that we, this is the first time we've ever used Twitch, but we're happy and we're doing it and we're getting out and we're socializing. I love you guys in the chat, by the way. Ugh. Also, oh yes. The person who was like, hey, how can I get everybody together? Laura Smith, this lady is killing it. If you're seeing her, give it up for her because without her, we would not probably have not done this because it's hard and work is hard. But give it up for Comedy Wham and also hashtag I isolation comedy. But this next performer, oh my God, she's only been doing comedy for I think about a year, but she's my favorite comic and I love her so much. Please give it up for Holly Rayborn Hart. Give it up for her. Give it up for Hello, everyone. And like Colton was saying, thank you. Thank you to everyone watching. Thank you to Colton for hosting. Thank you to Valerie, to, to Richard, to Lara, to all the amazing comics you've seen tonight. Um, yeah, and um, I'm done with thank yous now. Uh, my name is Holly Hart, and I'm not broadcasting from Austin. I know I'm so bad. Uh, I know I was supposed to like stay home like the cdc the who the government everyone is saying that but i'm like a little, little virus I'm not gonna let some people dying keep me from going on vacation keep me from going where i want to go uh tickets were so cheap and so i'm coming to you live from a very exotic location uh i am at my parents house in conroe texas i'm really so excited to be here it's a dream uh, my apartment flooded day four of quarantine in Austin. It was so fun. Uh, my upstairs neighbor, they left their, uh, their faucet running in their tub and it flooded their apartment and then flooded my apartment. And I was like, when I heard that, I was like, oh, did they like, did they try to kill them? Did they try to kill themselves in the tub? And, you know, no hate, been there, done that. I respect the hustle. Um, but that's actually not what happened. They just left their tub running. They went and took a nap and forgot, um, which is actually great. I'm so glad to hear that. Uh, not because I care if that person lives or dies, but because now it's a little easier to center me as the victim in all of this. And I don't just mean my apartment flooding. I mean the whole pandemic. If you get anything out of this live stream, I want it to be that I am not just a victim in all of this. I am the victim. Um, and I will not be elaborating further on that because it's too painful. Uh, I do think I'm going to start a GoFundMe for my flooded and destroyed apartment, but I'm going to wait until everyone gets that $1,200 from the government. You know, I'm not going to not going to rush it. I'm going to be strategic about this. Um, I know I probably have a lot of fans watching right now, Holly Hart fans, um, heart heads with a heart on. And you guys may notice that I look a little different from when you last saw me in public. Uh, that's because I did cut my hair in the middle of the night at like 3 a.m. And I know that's so cliche right now. So many women going crazy in isolation and cutting their hair. But listen, I've been crazy for a long time. Uh, I've got a mood disorder, trauma disorder, anxiety disorder, a personality disorder, and psychosis. So Miss Rona, Miss Rona is not even in the top five reasons for why I gave myself this haircut, Okay. Uh, I know my heart heads are probably wondering, you know, what are you doing to keep busy right now, Holly? What are you doing? Uh, and I gotta tell you, I'm working out every day, every day. Uh, most people aren't as lucky as I am to be staying with their parents who have heart, who have state of the art facilities like this. This is a mint condition 2012 shake weight. Okay. This more powerful than any virus, stronger than any vaccine. You know, you got to heal your body to heal your mind, to heal the virus. Uh, Diehard heart heads probably remember that before all this, 
Uh, I was getting my master's in epidemiology, which is, as you guys know, study of the spread of diseases. Uh, it's so trendy. I know I like was ahead of the game. Uh, so trendy. But I wasn't studying coronavirus. I was studying STDs. I was that was the main focus of my research, just learning all about those STDs. I learned so much about STDs. And uh, I got to tell you, I still don't use condoms. So uh, in conclusion, we're doomed. That's coming from an epidemiology student. If I'm not using condoms with all I know, then everyone is not washing their hands. The general public, they don't care. Uh, another thing that's happened since going into isolation is my dildo and my vibrator have tried to unionize. They've, they're have they considered essential workers and um, they've been working 12 hour shifts in some terrible conditions, honestly. I do think I'm gonna be hit with a lawsuit when all this is said and done. So if you you know can take pity on me with, with those legal troubles, if you wanna Venmo me something, Right down here, right down here is where you can find that information. All right, guys, thank you so much. Thank you for being here as I tell zero jokes and descend into madness. All right, back to Colton, bye. So, Holly Hart, I am so sorry, everybody. I did not put on my makeup. I have been meaning to. Also, this is not my bit. You should follow SNL on uh, Saturday Night Live, and you'll probably find something a little bit more. Oh, wait, is this is a makeup. Also, I look like Groucho Marx. I look like Groucho Marx. Anyways, that's been our show. If you like it, please come back next uh, Friday. Uh, that's what they call, oh, well, now I'm Wario. Wow, how fun. Did I mention I'm a gamer these days? Also, if you liked it, come back next Sunday. And also, we will be putting up our Venmos. Also, I'm goth now. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll see you next Friday, I guess. Isolation.